Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to be taking a look at the HDLRC F4 V6 Pro. Now this is a pretty nice concept. I think it was one of the first companies to do this. It's basically an all-in-one flight controller with a VTX built in. However, previous versions were not very reliable, especially the first version that came out. I got three of those and it was my most hated flight controller on the planet. However, the second one I never really got to review. Joshua Bardwell did a review on it. It seemed okay. It did have some noise in the video feed. But the main issue with these is the fact that they get so hot, sometimes they desolder themselves. That's one of the problems with these VTXs, all built in together into one board. It gets pretty hot, actually. So let's quickly talk about some of its specs here. So this is, uh, like I mentioned, it's a flight controller and a VTX and a PDB all built into one. So thus, it's called the all-in-one flight controller with a VTX. And uh, it's rated up to a 6S LiPo, which is pretty insane. It takes anywhere between the 3S to a 6S LiPo. And it, the, the, it does have race band on the VTX, and it's up to 600 milliwatts. So let's go ahead and quickly take a look at this board. Let's see what it comes with. So obviously, we have a low ASR capacitor, which I highly recommend you use, or you use one on your own, one of your own. They do give you a buzzer, as you can tell right there. And they give us our antenna for our VTX, and it's using the MMCX, I think, yeah, MMCX port, which is very nice, and uh, which will should, in theory, last long, as you can tell here. Let's move this to the side. And uh, as you can tell here, they've also added uh, some nylon standouts for us, which is very nice. And two connectors, which you will need, and they are silicone, so they've stepped up their game. I really like seeing that, so that's very nice to see. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at this. And they also, yeah, provide you with this uh, layout here, just in case you don't know how to set anything up. All right, so obviously this is this should be, this is the bottom side. This is not the top side. So in theory, it would be like this. In reality, it would be like this. The arrow's pointing forward, perfect. So this is how you'd want to put it in your quadcopter. Now, as you can tell here, we have motor one, which is S1, two, three, four, perfect beta flight orientation. That's what we like to see here. And uh, let me just get something to point with here, just so my fat fingers don't uh, ruin anything. All right. All right, so what do you want to do is you want to put your ESC signals here and here, but as you can tell, the pads are pretty damn small. And these are the type of pads that you can possibly rip off. So be very careful with these. <clears throat> and here, this is where you put your battery. And if you're curious, where the heck do I put a low ESR capacitor? You would put it here. And every low ESR capacitor has some kind of marking, like some strange marking that goes off to the side, as you can tell here, right there. That means this is the negative. And they even helped you out. They put the black, never trust the, uh, the, the heat shrink that's on them because sometimes they don't put them the correct way. So as you can tell here, here's our line. So this would be negative. So it would be soldered on with the power wires like so. so as you can tell, negative to negative and then positive to positive and you're good to go. I'd highly recommend you shorten these out a little bit. So I do recommend you adding that capacitor. I don't know if it's a low ESR capacitor. It's a Sanyo 1000 microfarad 35 volt low ESR capacitor, which is nice to see. It's pretty fat. It's huge. I mean, look at it. So you got to make room for this guy. All right. So let's go ahead and take a look at the board here. So we went over the layout. It's correct. The pads are pretty small for uh, the ESC power, which I really don't like currently at the moment of time. But um, overall, it should do the job just fine. Uh, as you can tell, the, the amount of filtration is very minimal. I really don't like seeing that. And uh, this button, be very careful with this button. You could easily pop this off. And if you pop this off, don't worry, it's not the end of the world. All you have to do is short out two of the pads. I think there's like three pads under this. Just keep shorting them out and figure it out. And then once you short them out, then you know it's like you clicked it. So that, that's all it does when you click a button. It just shorts out two pads. So that's what happens if you pop this guy off. As you can tell here, we do have an OSD chip, which is a nice beta flight OSD. We have our boot button here. And uh, this is supposed to be to change the channels here for the VTX that's in built. And obviously, there's your LED display to tell you what channel you're on. And uh, if we take a look at the camera, so this is where you'd want to install your camera. It's very simple, very basic, 5 volt regulator, awesome, very simple to see. However, this is where it gets kind of annoying. Let's flip it to this side. Now, if you're going to be connecting iBus, iBus is going to be super simple for you. You're going to have to connect it on the back side. You could also connect it through one of these connectors. But personally, what I would do, I would put iBus on that RX3 pad. And that's on the bottom. So, yeah, that's kind of annoying. SBus, there are no pads for SBus. So, yeah, what you have to do is, if we, if you take a look at your, uh, where is it? Yeah, here it is. So, if you take a look at your diagram here that they sent it with, you see that you have to use the connector port. And you could read it, PPM, SBus, 5 volt, and ground. This is where you'd want to power up your uh s bus receiver so i think these are both both connectors are the same thing really uh they're the same yeah they are are they yeah 
Hold on. All right. So what you want to do is you want to ch double check that you have it on the correct. So as you can tell here, there's no iBus on this side. This is LED and buzzer. So you want this top one, as you can tell. And this is on the bottom now. But if you flip it, just be careful because now everything is flipped here. So you have to just get the wires from right now. So the first one here, which is very nice to see that they still support PPM, but I don't think anyone's using PPM. This first wire here, as you could tell, it says PPM, so you don't need this. This yellow wire is for S bus only, because this is gonna be inverted for FR Sky S bus. So this is the yellow wire for S bus, and then you have a five volt for your receiver, and then a ground. So that's all said and done, that's how you do it. Now, if you're curious, if I had an S bus, how would I power this guy? How would I power my iBus receiver? Well, you would install it to RX3. That's where I recommend you put the signal. And you take these two wires here for to power up your receiver for iBus. So yeah, so take that into consideration. This is where you're gonna wanna power up your receiver, whatever receiver you have, unless it's a Spectrum. Spectrum is all the way uh, right before the end. So Spectrum 3 volt would be this guy right here. This guy, this is 3.3 volt for Spectrum with this ground wire here. And you would ignore every other wire here. So yeah, and you could also put iBus on this green one here and it'll be RX1, so UR1 would be the serial RX port for iBus. So pretty simple. Um, not the best setup. I mean, not the most well thought out thing I would say, but maybe they had no room. But I mean, I see a lot of places here they could have just stuck another five volt pad and just, you know, you, you ground, you could take ground from anywhere. But um, yeah, that's what they that's what they wanted to do here. Overall, I mean, it looks like a nice board. It's a bit. Um, to be honest, I personally don't like it, but um, I might build it. I might just give it away. I don't know what I'm gonna do with it just yet. But um, overall, it's a it's a pretty good board. It'll keep your stack pretty clean. Um, if you're into it, and if anyone's used it, please let us know down in the comment section how well how it went for you. But I do highly recommend if you do purchase this to stick a low ASR capacitor on board. Uh, it's just it's going to need it. As you can tell, we do also have a current sensor here. And overall, I mean, it looks pretty basic. Uh, looks nice design. The quality isn't really the best. I see some caps like misaligned. But um, as you can tell, the QC passed, so I guess it's working. So yeah, we'll figure out what we're going to do with this. We're going to do noise testing before we build it. Um, I do have a complete setup now where we could attach four motors. However, the uh, bolt shop or the screw shop is closed because I need to get some nuts and some washers to install my setup. And um, yeah, and that's it, guys. So I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please consider joining me on Patreon. You get some awesome things, awesome giveaways, awesome secret shop access and all that kind of crazy stuff. And um, yeah, and I'll leave a link to this down below if you're curious. Uh, they are affiliated links, so if you could click them, that would be super awesome. And that's going to conclude it for this video, guys. I really hope you guys enjoyed it, and I will see you next time. See you guys. Take care.